The discovery of glass fishing floats along the coast of British Columbia has captivated beachcombers alike throughout the 20th century. Here, uh, looking at a float collection on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. My name is Ted Collinson, and I've been collecting glass floats and wooden floats for about 50 years. I got interested in the glass fishing floats when my grandfather would come home from fishing season up north, then he'd bring us home a box of fishing floats, uh, similar to this one right here. It wasn't until um, I had my kids out at Port Renfrew when they were little, and we were out there for a hurricane force storm, that we found glass fishing floats coming ashore one morning. And that kind of renewed my interest in them. As you can see from the floats in this room, <coughs> Some of the unusual ones will have different seal colors. Some of them still have original netting on. They come in different sizes from almost the size of a golf ball all the way up to probably a meter through. The floats, the glass fishing floats particularly, um, stay offshore where the main parts of the currents are in the northern Pacific. So the only time you could get to those floats is when we've got quite a major weather system that comes in and the winds have to come in from a particular direction and actually blow those floats out of that current and into our shore. And uh, so there'll be years when no fishing floats come ashore and there'll be years when they all come in. It just has to be the right set of weather and patterns and winds for them to come in and then of course, it's like anything, it's being in the right place at the right time. You have to be the first people out on the beach. The best place for any beach combing on Vancouver Island is Brooks Peninsula because it kind of sticks out and you can get uh, the storm hitting the south side of it and the north side of it. So that's the best place, but it's hard to get to. Um, you can get in by fishing boat when the waters are calm. Uh, the rest of the time you'd have to go in by helicopter or by seaplane. The use of glass fishing floats can be traced back to 1840 Norway. The Norwegians used small egg-sized glass floats on which they tied their fishing line and hook. By 1910, Far East countries, primarily Japan, began manufacturing and using glass floats. Japan's adoption of glass fishing floats from Europe was a small symbol of a much larger phenomena of rapid industrialization. By 1940, glass had replaced wood and cork throughout Europe, Russia, North America, and Japan. The Japanese fish the whole globe. We used to only have a 10 mile limit and quite often it wasn't uh, enforced. So a lot of the floats that we find from Japan have come from Japanese fishing boats right in our waters. Since the late 1970s, Japanese distant water fishing has experienced the adoption of the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. This new law provided previously exploited nations greater control over their surrounding fisheries, in effect reducing Japan's free access to distant water fish stocks. The very process of internationalization that had brought glass fishing floats to Japan and in turn our waters now appears to be making it more and more rare to find glass floats on the coast of British Columbia. I have beach combed in northern Japan and they are still using glass floats. Okay, today we had quite a find of floats, almost 190 of them and a dead guy. Lots of different colors, small ones in the center, bigger ones on the outside. Feels like about eight degrees here right now. Cloudy, but not much rain. All in all, a pretty good day. What's that in your hand? <laughs> Antifreeze. <laughs> we found a thousand glass floats in three days, so we had about 1,200 glass floats to try to get back. Like in any collection, once you get to a certain point, you need to sort of decide on 
what interesting items in the collection you want to concentrate on. And so I've concentrated on rolling pins. So I'll take you to another part of the house and show you some of the rolling pins that I've found and traded for.